This past Sunday, I put out this video. Tesla price prediction. This week will be insane. Watch before Tuesday. In which, hindsight's 2020, but this video aged very well. The price that I thought Tesla would be by the end of this week was in between 240 and 250. It happened pretty quickly. You're already in the 240s. This seemed like a bit of a stretch considering last week Tesla was under 220. Well, we're here now. The big question is where are we going next? And every single one of you watching this video needs to hear this information. As well as that, shout out to you guys that are members of the channel. Figure I will uh, point that out. Thank you guys very much for supporting what we're doing here. And hopefully these videos truly help you make more money. Never trade short term. Never, you know, take this as financial advice. You guys understand the disclaimer. We're adults here. The average viewer of this channel is in between 45 and 65 years old. So I don't think we need to put a disclaimer. But... Just be clear, this is not financial advice. Here in this video, we're going to get into why I think Tesla stock is going to do what Tesla stock is going to do. Are we going to continue higher here, trade sideways, or even fall? What does the data suggest? And how should maybe an individual go about trading or investing in Tesla right now? We have a lot of facts, a lot of statistics and data to get into, so let's not bore you all too much. Let's go ahead and get into it. We are also going to take a look at the option activity today, over $3 billion worth of Tesla options, and it was another bullish day. This is in contrast to the video that was put out at 4 p.m. today in which it wasn't looking so good. Let's start with the flow of capital. There's something you really need to know. Doesn't matter if you're short-term, long-term, mid-term, what your outlook is for Tesla or any other stock, you need to know this. Over the next couple of months, over the next year or two, what outperforms is not going to be what has outperformed over the last 12 months. Meaning big tech in and of itself is not going to see the same returns as other sectors and other stocks. The reason for that is simple. The safety trades a Microsoft, an Apple, a Google, these big name companies, they benefited from rates going higher via their business is in no way, shape, or form connected to the course of interest rates. And as the Fed wrote, raised rates, they collected more cash on their existing cash piles via interest. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that big tech is going to do terrible, but if you're expecting big tech to outperform the markets again over the next coming months and in 2024, I think that is very mistaken. It's going to be your small cap stocks. It's going to be interest rate sensitive companies. So with that perspective in mind, those stocks do not move the broader markets. It would not surprise me to see stocks roaring under the surface and your indexes to be doing very little. Hedge funds and institutions are moving around billions of dollars. It does not happen overnight. This is the beginning of a transition of capital allocation in our markets. It's going to take a while. It's going to probably take two or three months for investors to switch and start buying these small cap stocks to get positioned for rate cuts. Doesn't happen overnight. Tesla has been outperforming, one, because we've gotten a lot of good news for Tesla recently. That also helps, but Tesla is really the best place you can be positioned because small mid cap stocks, they inherently have a higher risk to reward, right? They have the potential of going bankrupt and you losing all of your money. And they could also 10, 20, 30, 40 X in the relative near term future, the next five or 10 years. Tesla offers you that aspect 10, 20, 30 X over the next five to 10 years. But it also offers you a level of quality that is unparalleled in any other small or mid cap company out there. Think about this logically. 
try to find a single company out there besides Tesla that will benefit more from rates coming down rather than Tesla. I bet you cannot find one. Small and mid-cap stocks, they benefit from lower rates because for the most part, they have debt. They need to raise capital to continue to grow their businesses. When rates go lower, it makes long-term valuations more attractable and it makes it easier to raise capital. Think about it like this. If you can get 5% on a 10-year bond, well, over the course of 10 years, you're going to make 50% on a return. I mean, that's great. That's fine and dandy. Or you can risk your money over the next five or 10 years in a Joe Smo random small cap stock and maybe make a 10x if you're lucky, if you're very lucky, or you could lose all of your money over the next 10 years. What sounds better? Well, maybe getting that risk-free 50% return over the next 10 years, well, looks a lot better, right? But Tesla there's no chance you're going to lose all your money. I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't think you need to be one to say that, but just be clear. I'm not a financial advisor. Anything can happen. Invest your money at your own risk. Probably not going to happen. Tesla has a very high likelihood of at least 10 xing over the next coming years. And if rates come down, let's say to two and a half percent on a 10 year treasury, then your risk reward makes a little bit more sense investing in a long duration stock. But for Tesla that benefits directly from rates coming down in a huge way and has that long term exponential return potential, Tesla's a hands down choice. But capital does not move around quickly in our markets, especially when a lot of people are still very bearish. Contrary to popular belief, when there's a lot of bears, that tends to be a good time to buy. And right now, people are still very, very bearish. Believe it or not, even after yesterday's rally for stocks, 61% of investors were bearishly positioning in the S&P 500. 39% were bullishly positioning. For the Dow, 70% bearish positioning, and 30% bullish positioning. This in and of itself looks very bullish because that just means 60 to 70% of investors are probably going to switch to being bullish as this rally does continue. That's more potential buying pressure and bullish positioning that we will see for our markets. This chart is showing you fund managers and the percentage of them that are overweight on bonds. Now, anything under zero, generally speaking, means they're not overweight bonds. Simple terms. Because why would you be overweight bonds when stocks are ripping higher? You wouldn't be. You'd be in stocks, right? Well, 2021, you could see 70, 80% of big money managers were underweight bonds. Well, look at today. About 20% of fund managers are overweight on bonds. You have not seen this since March of 09. This means there's not a lot of money allocated to stocks. There's a lot of money in bonds and on the sidelines in cash, just waiting to re-enter into this market. Where do you think that money's going to go? It's going to go into stocks that benefit from whatever is going on at the time. And let me tell you right now, the last two years have been a drag on small mid-cap stocks. Anything that has to do with financing, like a Tesla, 90% of Teslas are financed, or really any car for that matter, the money is going to flow into those names. This is not rocket science. And I'm surprised most of Wall Street does not understand this. If I can sit here and tell you, it's really not complicated. But you, my friend, are ahead of Wall Street. They don't understand. This is the early innings of a great capital shift in our markets. This is a chart of money market funds, kind of like investors buying bonds, but you're just pooling money into a fund. This is a lot more liquid, but it 
does get destroyed when the Fed lowers rates. So like surprise rate cuts or something along those lines is really bad for money market funds. People can lose a lot of money quickly. Well, this is basically an instrument where you can get in, you can get out. You're going to get slightly less putting your money in a money market fund than a bond would pay you because the fund itself is going to keep a small portion of the proceeds from bonds. These are really short-term bonds as well. I, I, I should point that out. It's like a three-month, six-month bond up to a two-year bond. They're not going further than that, though, in most cases. So this is something where investors can put their money when rates are high, they want to collect cash or interest on their cash, and then they can flip-flop and get into stocks when the tide looks greener over there. Or maybe I should say the grass looks greener over there. There is currently $5.9 trillion sitting in money market funds. The Russell 2000, I'm sure you've heard of it. It has a total market cap of $2.23 trillion, about three times less than the current amount of money in money market funds. Where do you think is going to benefit from rates going lower? Small cap stocks. Stocks like Tesla. I know Tesla's not a small cap stock. It's the, I believe, the ninth largest market cap company in the world. But Tesla's uniquely positioned where it's very sensitive to interest rates. Probably the most sensitive company in the world to interest rates. So we'll benefit a lot when rates come down. It's high quality. It's investment grade. There's there's really no, no beating Tesla in that degree. And then you also have the lottery aspect of Tesla, where Tesla could go up dramatically in value. Mix that together, and it's easy to see how small mid-cap stocks and select larger cap companies like a Tesla are probably going to do very well here over the next coming months. CNN's Fear and Greed Index is at 53, so you're just at about neutral. Greed goes to about 75, and then Extreme Greed goes from 75 to 100. So you're far from Extreme Greed, but this is a relatively big move higher over the past month or so. I mean, one month ago, you were at 26, and now you're at 53. So to see this kind of relax for a while, to see stocks kind of trade sideways in a range would not surprise me until we get new information. I would also not be surprised if stocks continue higher. But what I'm not expecting is some big decline for our markets. And when so many people are short in our markets that are short stocks like a Tesla, Tesla remains the most shorted stock on the markets and short sellers are losing hundreds of millions of dollars today alone their total loss in the last four days is over three billion dollars well either one of those scenarios would not surprise me i should also point out that seasonally speaking november and december are the number one and number two best months ever in the history of the market so if there was a time to be bullish if there was a time to be excited on stocks it's probably now I think investors are so shell-shocked from the last two years getting fake-outs here, fake-outs there, that they're really not in a rush to allocate back to stocks. Think about it like this. Back in 2022, in January, February, March, we knew the Fed was going to start raising rates. We thought we were going to get three rate hikes in 2022 to 0.75% at the start of the year. Well... Almost instantly, we started hiking rates by 50 basis points. Like, that was a shock. And then we just kept getting surprise after surprise after surprise. It makes sense why investors are not going all in right now in our markets. But you are getting some positioning. Here on the day today for Tesla's option activity, you had almost 1,400 hedge fund and institutional trades worth $3.07 billion with a positive order value of 51%. So a little bit more positive than negative. But if you look at the put to call ratio uh, over the next 1,000 days or so, it's at 0 0.83. So there's slightly more calls than puts, but it's not 
super bullish as well. Even if you look at this Friday's expiration for Tesla, the put to call ratio is 1.1. That means there is 1.1 puts for every one call. There's more puts than calls for this week's expiration. Even after the insane rally that you have seen, there's still a lot of people that are bearish on our markets. So it seems very clear to me over the next 12 months or so, you want to be in a stock like a Tesla. I actually think Tesla could hit new all-time highs within the course of the next 6 to 12 months. And a lot of these gains could happen in the next three to six months. Here in the short term, I'm going to be honest with you. There is signs that the momentum is starting to slow at least a little bit. One of them would be this retracement from the highs today. Now, the markets themselves, well, they were okay, pretty flat, but you kind of seen that as well with the markets. You opened high and then there was some profit taking, if you will, throughout the day with this one larger drop uh, towards almost exactly the middle point of the day today. Tesla stock still massively outperformed the markets. The QQQ was up almost a tenth of 1% today and Tesla stock was up 2.3% today. Tesla stock, even here in after hours, is up to 200 $41.94 per share. It's been a great rally over the last couple of days. And hopefully some of you guys heard these videos, watched that Sunday video and made some money from it. But I'm also not expecting some big downside move at the same time like a lot of people are. A lot of retail investors right now are pretty bearish. I just don't understand why. I can't think of one good reason to be bearish. Literally not one good reason. Besides, you might see a slight pullback. I would call it a kind of consolidation phase because we have rallied so much. But to expect a big fall from here, I just don't see the logic. Specifically with Tesla stock, you are now above your 50-day moving average. That is at $240.68. I think you're going to find a lot of healthy support at the 50-day moving average. You might find a lot of resistance around the 100-day moving average at $248.57. You could be range-bound here in the 40s, at least throughout the rest of this week. But would I be super shocked if you end this Friday at 238 or 239? Absolutely not. Would I be shocked if we're 250 or more by the end of this week? Absolutely not. But at this point, I am expecting some sort of consolidation phase. Again, remember, the narrative is clear. Small caps, mid caps, high quality if you can. Your household names are probably going to do a lot better than others. Some of the small caps I own would be like a Fubo. Most people know about Fubo. SoFi, most people know about SoFi. Crocs, you have PayPal which is not really a small cap stock, but a beaten down stock, uh, Snapchat, right? These are well-known names that for the most part have seen earnings actually get better and their business has gotten stronger over the past two years, but the interest rate environment has not allowed their stocks to do well. Same thing with Tesla. Don't forget, you're still down almost 50% from all-time highs. Tesla is in the same camp as those stocks that I just mentioned. When I look at the RSI, that is at about 60, which is not overbought, but it's not oversold at the same time. You could go a little bit higher on the RSI. You could hit 70 on the, R the RSI, which would probably put you around 250, maybe 255 before you do get that consolidation phase. Or you consolidate here, trend back down to 50 or even maybe slightly under 50, just depending how long we trade in a range or sideways. And then you make that exponential move higher into the 260s, 270s, or ultimately the 280s heading into the end of November, the beginning of December. I actually think it's possible to end this year by the last week of December if we do in fact see a Santa Claus rally, which that's what it's looking like, I wouldn't be surprised to see Tesla in the low 300s. Now, our markets are going to be very sensitive to data that we get. That's just the bottom line. That's the fact of the matter. 
and it's going to move around your treasury yields. Today, 10-year treasuries actually rose about 11 basis points. That's why you did see some pressure on certain stocks. Some other stocks did better. Your 10-year treasury yields did rise by a lot today. And there was no specific rhyme or reason necessarily why that happened, at least that caused that big of a move. Probably just because bond yields, while well, they were 5%, they went down to uh, about 4.4%. And yeah, that was a big drop in a short amount of time. They're just recorrecting a little bit now we're going to get a lot of data coming out tomorrow morning actually import prices month over month for october initial jobless claims for november 11th philadelphia fed manufacturing index continuing jobless claims export prices year over year import prices year over year uh, jobless claims four week average philly fed business conditions philly fed capex index philly fed employment philly fed new orders and philly fed prices paid you're also going to get industrial production month over month and year over year capacity utilization manufacturing production month over month manufacturing production year over year uh, all of that data comes out in between 8 30 in the morning and 9 15 in the morning tomorrow so right before the bell uh 15 minutes before you're gonna have all of that data that that we just went over some of them can be important like philly fed prices paid that can tell you a little bit more about inflation, how the consumer is doing, as well as Philly Fed new orders. Those can be important and Philly Fed business conditions for that matter as well. Now, at 925 in the morning tomorrow, Fed Williams will speak. Fed Waller speaks at 1030. Fed Barr at 1035. And then you get the Kansas Fed Composite Index at 11 a.m. Kansas Fed Manufacturing Index as well at 11 a.m. Fed Cook speaks at noon tomorrow. Fed Mester also speaks at noon. And then you have overall net capital flows and a couple short-term bond auctions, which I'm I mean, those are never exciting because they're directly tied to Fed policy. You have a four-week and an eight-week bond auction. Not expecting anything there. Again, if you were to see some big move in in yields, that would obviously be um a story in and of itself. But that has not happened recently, so I'm not expecting it. But there's going to be a lot of secondary data coming out tomorrow. And then on Friday, you're going to get building permits. So I think this is just a little bit of digestion after the move higher we have seen, after the good CPI report, after the good PPI, after your optimistic outlook for retail sales. It, it came in basically like Goldilocks. This whole week's economic data was Goldilocks, right? It, it was your best possible outcome. I think that continues to be bullish for markets, but again, capital does not flow into, you know, their fi its final destination within the course of, of one day or two days or three days. These things can take two to three months to see capital fully allocate uh, heading into what I think is 2024 and the year of small mid cap stocks and interest rate sensitive companies. Something like a Tesla is in the best position possible to benefit from exactly what we've talked about, lower rates and a better consumer, maybe than expected. The problem will be eventually when we do actually head into a recession, if that does happen, then what? Then the question is, how deep, how long? As long as you're not looking at a super deep recession, you should be okay. You, sh you should be fine. So that is going to go ahead and do it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think is coming next for Tesla stock. I, I want to know your opinions. Are we going higher? Are we going lower? Are, 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 are you expecting just maybe a little bit higher from here? Or are you expecting a lot higher from here? Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. If you guys would like to come trade with us live in real time, link down below in the description of this video. We have hit some uh, pretty impressive trades over the past 24 hours or so, and uh, hopefully that does continue uh, at least uh, for a while here. So thank you for watching. My name is Michael Tyler. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.